This is Deborah Johnson for Women at Halftime, and I'm passionate about helping women use their untapped skills, resources, and talents to create their ideal work and lifestyle, making a difference in their second half. Well, Wayne Haston, Dr. Wayne Haston, it is so great to have you uh, with me today. I am so excited about this subject because for those at halftime, uh, doing what you're doing is absolutely fascinating. Uh, we are going in, digging a little deeper into this discovering your family history, and you have really dug deep. Now, just as a little um, introduction here, you've got two doctorates, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, to, and and quite the educational, you know, background and instructor and all of this, but you don't really have to have a doctorate to do this, correct? I mean, any? <laughs> oh no, no, not at all. In fact, uh, s some of the people that have contributed most to my research that I've worked with are people that um, have no college education and get some amazing help from people that are just. Um, just normal folks, uh, blue collar people that uh, just have an interest in their family. And uh, it's, it's really pretty simple. Um, so it's not something that requires a lot of education. Oh, that's great. Well, you were a, um, a, a seminar, a seminary professor um, for 22 years and director of a missionary training for 23 years. I mean, you have quite the educational background and you've written three books and you're working on your forest. So, you know, definitely you have so much to be able to share with us today. I love to go to the, right to the top. So this is really fun for me. And of course, we've known each other for years because we met through my husband and he met you playing ball, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, long, years, right. yeah. long years ago. Now, um, first of all, how did you become interested in researching your family's history? Well, I've had an interest since I was a child. Um, my my grand, let's look back on that, that question. My grandfather had a book uh, on the history of our county, and it was just kind of lying around on his table, and I would pick it up and read. That was probably, oh, maybe 12, 13 or something like that. And uh, I saw the names of some of my family members in there, and it was the county where I grew up, where my ancestors settled oh, um, over 200 years ago. And so I knew the places, the locations there, and there were family members. And I, I, I probably read that book mm -hmm. as a kid uh, two or three times. And that kind of planted an interest to know more about our family. I asked some questions to my dad. He really didn't know anything about my family. My mother knew about, more about my dad's family mm -hmm. than he did. And I'd ask her questions, and she I knew some things, but not a lot. But that, that interest was always there. I just didn't have time to pursue it until... I was in my 50s, actually. Wow. And so you had this interest, and what made you just dive right in like this? I mean, besides that little interest that was sparked. <laughs> well, I was really busy with my, with my, my uh, teaching vocation, and I didn't have a lot of extra time. But uh, when, I, when I came to Pennsylvania and took another position uh, here with the missionary organization, I had more time. Mm -hmm. um, but I just kind of happened to um, some way make contact with a group of about five or six people that were doing an email share kind of thing mm. on the history of our family. And I kind of got engaged in that. And I began asking them questions and uh, they began giving me some information. I started going. It's kind of interesting that all of them eventually dropped off. Wow. <laughs> uh, some, some, some for health reasons and some just lost interest. And here I was standing alone. <laughs> uh, and but I I was so into it at that time I just had to keep going. Wow! And um, your the little website that you not little website the website you've put up and you have a Facebook and I'll share all of these in in the notes. Uh, but the DanielHaston.com it's rather extensive on your notes. I mean you just really dug right in, and so because you do come from that research background as a doctorate. Um, but what's the most enjoyable aspect of this family research to you in your history? What, what stood out to you? Oh, uh, finding new information, especially things that our family, uh, I, I, what I found, Debbie, is that uh, a lot of people in previous generations had done a lot of research on our family. And I was totally unaware of that, of that until I got into it. Hmm. But there were, there were mysteries that they kind of left hanging and they couldn't find certain answers. And when I started 
finding some of that information, it was like, wow, I'm, I'm making a contribution here. I remember asking one of the guys that has spent a lot of time doing research on our family. I said, uh, is there anything left for me to find? I mean, I assume that you people <laughs> have, have scraped the bottom of the barrel. And I remember he said, Wayne, there's always something more in the bottom of the barrel. Wow. And I, I found a lot of information that they had not found. And it's kind of rewarding, really, to dig that out. Uh, and make a contribution, really kind of standing on the shoulders of a lot of people who've done research in in previous generations. Wow, wow, that's um, that's I mean that's fascinating. Just the joy that you found something new. It's like a little treasure or something that you you found right. it. You know, <laughs> I remember the first time that that uh, my wife and I went to the library to do some research, and I'm thinking we'll we'll not find anything. And on the first day, <laughs> within maybe two hours, we found something that. Well, I thought at the time nobody had ever found, at least they had not really published it very much. And I was so excited and that just kept me going. And it's like um, family research is like working a puzzle. Uh, you, you, you you kind of, you find pieces, you put them all together and eventually you start seeing the whole picture. Now we will never see the picture totally clearly because they're always going to be missing pieces of the puzzle. But when you find a missing piece, it's so exciting. It's so rewarding. And the thing about the hobby that I really like is I feel like I'm, I'm leaving a legacy Wow! Uh, to my family, my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids and other generations and other families too, they're related. So it's really rewarding um, mm-hmm. as a hobby. It's, uh, it's a lot different than some hobbies where they maybe enjoy it, have, have fun. But uh, with this, I feel like I'm leaving, making a contribution and that's why I'm writing the book, uh, trying to leave that for future generations. And and wow, and what sort of digging of that research uh, that you're doing, because it really, you can really see a lot of that on, you know, the Facebook page and on your posts. And, and you've got, you know, you've got a good amount of little followers that are following you right there and then your, and your website. And, and at first, when I looked at this, this heritage of Daniel Haston, um, what um, that heritage, uh, what was that sort of title all about for you? I mean, that's pretty much um, because it's Daniel Wayne Haston. Is that correct? Or is it, what, how, how does that all play in there? So, Well, Daniel Haston was my great, 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 great grandfather. Oh, how many greats is that? Four or well, five? Four. <laughs> four. But okay. I can go back, his father, I can go back to his father. Actually, on the uh, website, uh, I go all the way back to Switzerland, where my, my family came from. Mm-hmm. And uh, a year and a half ago, Sharon, my wife and I, and my brother and his wife uh, actually traveled to Switzerland and Germany where our family, and went to the very villages where our family originally came from. But uh, what I found when I started doing the research that Daniel Haston, uh, there are so many descendants all over the country. In fact, uh, one of them went to California in 1857. Wow. Uh, And so I I began to realize there are a lot of families out there that have an interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I kind of focus on him and all the branches of his family. Uh, Although I do the first six or seven chapters deal with his father and uh, and their 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 uh, uh, early years in Switzerland and Germany and coming to Pennsylvania and, and so forth. Now, when you were over in Switzerland, this is very interesting to me, kind of a little side note, uh, because I have family that have come from Italy. And where do you even start? Okay, so you went over there to Switzerland. Like, what do you do? You know, I've heard you go through the big books and you do, you know, you know, all of this. Where do you even look in the foreign countries and how do you find some? do, Do you try to do interviews or what? How did you approach that when you traveled overseas? Well, you have to backtrack, so you have to start uh, where you are and then trace the family back. One of the interesting things, Debbie, that I found that was a that solved the mystery in our family research, uh, there, there were three theories about where our family came from. One was that we were English and that our name was originally Hastings. Mm-hmm. Uh, another theory was that we were Scots-Irish, uh, from, originally from Scotland. They came to Ireland and then to America. And then another one was that we were Swiss German Mennonites, originally from Switzerland, who came to Germany, and that we were Mennonites, or so-called Anabaptists. And uh, nobody could prove 
e either of those. And uh, when I did my DNA test in 2008, it matched us up uh, undoubtedly as, as descendants of these Swiss German Mennonites. I knew quite a bit about the family that we probably were connected with. And uh, so that really opened up a whole new world. Then I was kind of able to backtrack where, uh, where those people came from in Virginia and how uh, my five great grandfathers settled in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, about an hour from where I live now. Wow! Uh, and then how how his family, where his family was, and we were backtrack all the way back to the villages uh, in Switzerland. They were they were run out of there because of their faith. Okay. They were persecuted. They mm. had to flee. Went down to Germany, Southwest Germany, on the Rhine River. Mm. Uh, had were favored there to some degree, but still persecuted. And my uh, my five great grandfather came to uh, America in about seventeen twenty seven. Wow! Wow! Now that brought up another point because when I did look at your website, I you even posted your DNA test. I mean, this is really fascinating. If anyone wants to know, you know, how to start digging, I mean, that is absolutely fascinating, and how you were able to separate that and. Anybody can do that these days. Right. They can, yeah. you know, go about, you know, doing that if you're serious yeah. about doing it. And um, how fascinating. Now, where would you um, start? Uh, because going to, you know, doing this huge trip, you had already been working on this. You started it in 1999, right? I mean, that's almost right. like 20 years ago. So, yeah. So it's been a little bit of a journey and you were still working lots of hours and kind of gradually doing this. So um, where would they even start at this point? Because half times it's um, officially age 40 and above, but most of the people are around in their fifties, but they're deciding, okay, what else do I want to do in my life? Do I want to leave a legacy? Do I want to, you know, what sort of, um, I, want, I need to work, but also I'd like to leave some sort of legacy maybe for my family or find out a little bit more. So where do they even start? Well, that's really a great question. Um, <laughs> I think the place to start, uh, in most cases, you'll find, families will find that a lot has already done been done. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know that when I got started, I began to realize that there were several people had published, not well, there were actually a couple of books that have been published in our family that, that were kind of obscure. Um, some papers people have written, some files. So I found about oh, five or six people from previous generations that have done a lot of work, and I was able to really uh, start with that. But you mm -hmm. have to be careful with that because there's a lot of false information. Uh, it's amazing. Some of these people back in the 40s and 50s and even earlier were traveling all over the country before we had interstates, before we had... Xerox kind of copy machines mm -hmm. and they were they were doing research it was kind of phenomenal I mean I, wow. I'm just amazed and I, I gained a lot from that then as I've as I've uh, been exposed to a lot more information I kind of I filtered out what was not accurate what is accurate and all that hmm. um, the DNA thing is also very helpful when I started this as you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. the the DNA was not available for 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 the public in general Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really been helpful in connecting with the people uh, and also proving that certain families uh, out there with the name Haston or actually there's about five or six different versions of that name, but finding that they were truly connected to our family. They are truly descendants of Daniel Haston. That's really been exciting to a lot of those families. One, uh, one family out in, uh, they were actually in California mm -hmm. and they had done a lot of research, but they weren't really sure. And when I did, uh, they did some DNA testing of their son, a uh, perfect match with mine. Wow. And, and they, it's just really been exciting to kind of build this community of our family, um, our family lines. Uh, that's, I mean, that is just so fascinating. It's very exciting, you know, because I feel like in my family, it's the same sort of thing. There's a lot of missing pieces, but uh, there's a little bit that's been done on both sides. So, and mm -hmm. this was mainly your side that you're going after. So that was, uh, you know, fascinating. Right. My, my mother's side, my, uh, my aunt, my, mm -hmm. um, my mom's young, younger sister has done a lot of research on that family. It's, um, they were Davises okay. and Dicuses and that line. Uh, so I feel, I don't, I'd love to get, I'd love to have time to get into that more, but there's enough there that I feel pretty comfortable with that. Uh, so I can kind of focus on, on our own family, mm -hmm. my Haston family. That's neat. Um, 
I'm going to kind of uh, transition a little bit on that social media too, because I've been talking about your website and your Facebook group. Um, just kind of give a little glimpse on and how that's been helpful for you because you've got, you know, I mean, for the type of research you're doing and the type of, uh, of, of group there is, it's an open group on a Facebook group, but you know, with the, uh, that's a good little following that you have there that's actually on, on this sort of, uh, of a site with genealogical research. I mean, my goodness, that's quite, you know, quite something, but has that helped you or has it um, inspired others? What's, what's happened with that? Well, there's a lot more falling on my on my website. The Facebook thing is fairly new, uh, maybe the last year or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that one is um, it's it's an open group, but that people have to apply. Uh, it's yes. not totally open, but people. Uh, I'm trying to focus more on people that have a, either have an interest in our family or maybe are connected some way, primarily. Right. But um, when I back in 1999, I was uh, I was a webmaster for our organization, our mission agency. Oh. So I knew a lot about developing websites and web technology. When I started doing research, I was almost immediately, Debbie, overwhelmed with all the things I was, I was finding. I'm like, wow. what am I gonna do? How, how will I organize this? Yes. And how will I make sense of all this? And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll develop a website. So that's, <laughs> that goes back uh, over 20 years. So the site is kind of dated in terms of technology, but the information is still, still good. And so I would come home from research trips and uh, create pages and develop it and organize it. So now, uh, and I guess maybe I had the idea of writing a book even back then, but now writing a book is much easier because a lot of that work has already been done. Yes. And I just yes. kind of adapt that. And, and it's, I basically follow the same organization on the website. Hmm. Uh, but that's been very helpful. I've gotten a lot of contacts through the website and through, some through Facebook. Hmm. Um, a lot of new information, some key pieces that I've gotten there from people that have an interest. In, and uh, there's quite a bit of uh, use of the Daniel Haston uh, website. It's, uh, it's been pretty amazing how people have been, kind of been uh, drawn to that. Yeah. That's, that's such a great principle because um, that's the hub because we own our websites. That's really important. Right. We don't right. own Facebook and you know, stuff yeah, can change, you know, algorithms and all that. But I mean, it's a pretty extensive um, website. I mean, the information on it. Sure, you can upgrade the style and all that sort of stuff. I'm into web. I have a number of websites and I do a lot of my own editing, but but now they give you a lot of tools, you know, you can do that, which is wonderful. But it's a, there's a lot of information that you have on there that, that digs deep. And, you know, you've got your, you know, the photos on it and you've got the, you know, illustrations, all of that and your posts on it. And um, very, very interesting. So, so if one were to start on this and even link together with family members, it's fairly, it's not that expensive to do a, a separate website. You know, right. that's pretty yeah. easy these days, uh, <laughs> user friendly, not a lot of money uh, to be able to even start that. And I loved the way you said uh, that you, you already have the research, a lot of it done for your book project. This applies to almost every area. It doesn't matter if it's genealogical research or any other area that we're doing with, um, with posts and with re the other little, uh, little areas. So well, tell us a little bit about the book uh, that you're working on because it's basically a, is it a summation of a lot of this or are you going to expand it more or what's the purpose of it? Is it mainly for family or for anyone or what is that for? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, it's, it's kind of starts with a website, but it goes a lot, a uh, lot deeper. Um, uh, there'll be about 30 chapters as it stands right now in the book. Um, mm -hmm. It goes all the way back, as I said, to our roots in, in Europe and then the, the movements within early America. And then I'll get down and I'll branch out into all the all the uh, the children of Daniel Haston down their lines, that kind of thing. Um, I've written about over over 500 pages already in this book. Wow. So it's going to be massive. I'm, I'm thinking. Wow. <laughs> Eight or nine hundred pages. So it's not like leisurely reading, like somebody pick. <laughs> well, that's my that's my plan B. I'll tell you about uh, my my main goal. With I realize that probably very few people will read this book from cover to cover, um, 
but it's it's basically to to organize and bring together a lot of information and it's documented i have more than 200 footnotes in some of the chapters my main goal with a big book is get into the libraries i i want to get it into at least 100 libraries in wow. key places where our family has traveled and located uh but then i then the second plan plan b is to create the shorter version mm -hmm. the more readable version yes uh yes. maybe maybe 200 pages and that's for people that uh, have a casual interest Okay. Uh, and then all the references, all the documentation that they want, they have, they can go to the big book and the library and that kind of thing. And then probably after I get it, get it circulated, the big book, I'll probably make it available as a free downloaded PDF file and, and put it online like that. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's yeah. especially now that I'm uh, semi-retired, uh, it, it keeps me busy and it keeps me focused. I'm sure, uh, your wife, Sharon, enjoys that keeping busy <laughs> yeah and by the way i want to say she has been very very uh, mm. helpful in this process mm. you know i um just travel with me to libraries and um uh, spent a lot of time and actually got an interest in herself so mm. uh, it's it, she's been a real blessing and real help oh that's that's really really neat well what's the most it's so nice to have that encouragement because it could be discouraging and what's the most if you could name one or maybe you have a couple discouraging aspects of your research um it's kind of a lonely hobby in a sense because it's so narrowly focused like i have my a lot of my close friends they obviously they have no interest in this because they're not family members they have their right. own families mm -hmm. and it's kind of a lonely thing sometimes but i really enjoy the few people that uh, i do communicate with that are interested and i have been able to develop some really nice friendships with people mm. that have an interest and those have been been very very uh very good and very rewarding but sometimes it's kind of lonely and uh, it's kind of strange debbie that um <clears throat> some people think it's stupid it's like what are you oh. studying these old people these dead people um and I, I really was surprised with it. I, I thought that all my family, my uh, all the people related to me would be happy and excited about this, but um, that's not always the case. <laughs> that's like, are you crazy? What are you doing that for? Yeah. You could be out right. playing golf or you could be out doing this. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Isn't that funny? So, well, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, starting, but... Um, what are, are there some resources and, and if um, anyone wanted, they haven't even begun. Okay. So I, to mm -hmm. kind of look for if there's anything done about it or where do they, you know, cause there's all these ancestry.com and all those sort of things. What would you suggest? How does somebody even start and is there a cost and what about that? Well, as you mentioned, ancestry.com is a really good resource. There is, there's a cost to that. There are different levels of cost to that. Um, there's a uh, free website that the uh, that the uh, the Mormon Church has called family familysearch.org uh, that has a lot of really good information on that. Uh, and now through the internet, it's just it's amazing to me when I think about what all these people in previous generations have been were able to do without having email or the internet yeah. and had to travel yeah. on on two lane highways all over the country. Uh, but now with the uh, um, with the internet, a lot of families can find just just Google searching uh, information and documents that are very helpful. Again, have to be careful with those. Yes. Uh, yes. An another thing that uh, I learned very early in this process was uh, to make contact with family members, especially older ones, and pick their brains. Mm. I really got started a little bit late. I was in my fifties when I started. I wish I'd started when I was. I was, young, I was younger, um, but I didn't. But uh, I was able to contact some people that um, knew a lot more about the family history. They just had an oral history that they had collected down through the years, mm -hmm. and that was very helpful. Um, but uh, trying to find trying to find some place to get started, find um, somebody that's done something and start from there is really the best way. And then, then you can get into Ancestry.com and FamilySearch.org and some of the other, the other sources. That's, um, that's a great word of advice. And, uh, you know, and, and it's interesting. You find those people that come out of the woodwork a little bit and yeah. um, 
when I was, uh, we, we had the services for my parents, lost both my parents last year. So we had, but one of my, my cousins said, you know, and I said, oh, I'm going to go to Italy. And that's kind of on my bucket list, like spending a good amount of time there, finding a little bit more about, you know, my grandma that played in Carnegie Hall was brought over here as an immigrant. immigrant and she says, oh, did you know that I went over there and I did a lot of the research? And it's like, no. <laughs> so, there you go. Exactly. There I go. I need to meet with Dolly and we're going to go, you know, we're going to have a, a five hour lunch or something one of these days and and go through all of the stuff that she has discovered because that that's a place to start and I have a little bit of that and because people don't remember you've just got it you've got to grab it while they are here you know and I started taking notes from my mom and my dad like on index cards years ago on just little family stories because those come in handy too and just finding you know some of the people that they knew so um yeah putting together what you're putting together though is is quite impressive and inspiring to many and how has this really influenced your life personally or has it i mean it's kept you busy that's the thing and how wonderful that sharon's gotten involved that's a great gift and how fun um that is but how has that influenced you personally because you are leaving a legacy and you are, I mean, this book that you are doing, I mean, that is a, um, I mean, that's, that's a, a doctorate on steroids. I mean, to be able to do something like this, a librarian, you know, uh, edition, but um, can you expand on that a little bit? Well, um it's been rewarding, obviously, and like you say, it's really uh, kind of kept me busy. I, I think it's good. I'm, I'm, uh, I'll soon be 73. Keeps my mm-hmm. mind sharp. Keeps me, uh, keeps me doing research and that kind of thing. But it's in a way that's productive and not just a hobby. That uh, you know, I like to work puzzles. I like to work crossword puzzles. But when you when you finish one, what have you left? Yes. You know, just tear it up and start over again if it's a puzzle. Mm-hmm. But this leaves something, and so I, that's been that's been really good. You know, as a as a Christian, also it's been uh, interesting that um, I can now understand uh, more than ever before how family was really important in the Bible. Hmm. Uh, if you read through the Bible and read all those genealogies, um, not all of those are necessary to to follow the bloodline of, of Jesus Christ. A lot of those were just family genealogies that tell us that to God, families were important. The Jewish people uh, at that time really valued their family and their their ancestors enough to record it. And no doubt they probably had those genealogies memorized. And so I think there is, I think it does tell us something about the value of family. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though I don't think today families maybe quite understand that. By the way, I will say this: as people get older, they start valuing this sort of thing, which is really good for your for your podcast. Yes. Um, the older we get, the more family begins to be important to us, and the more we value even uh, our our heritage and our, our ancestors and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, as you do that, you will find some you'll find some skeletons out there. <laughs> you just have to realize that they're not they're not all going to be great people but that's a part of that's part of life it, it really is isn't it and i really noticed that with my father i mean he we lost him kind of suddenly um but i mean our family dinners he would tear up and he, oh so important with the family and just the gathering together and Greg and I are really starting to realize that now with our kids, when we get them together, we sit back. And I remember my parents sitting back and just listening. And we're doing that now. <laughs> like We want our kids to get along. You know, they're all so different. And, you know, and who they marry, it's yeah. going to be all different, you know, that way. But but it's it's just a joy of just being a part of that journey and really appreciating then the legacy and the sacrifices. You know, my grandmother saved... I don't know how many plastic bags and tin foil, and she didn't. My parents never threw away anything. Nothing. I mean, it was just amazing what we had to go through. Oh my gosh! But it, it just shows the sacrifices that they made. Even, you know, they were able to give my sisters and I music lessons. I mean, they, they grew up with nothing, nothing, and so uh, we just it makes you appreciate as you go back 
um, that family history and the importance. I loved the way you brought you brought in you know the biblical accounts too, and how there's so much genealogy. That when that printing press started with Gutenberg and all that, that was a bestseller. It was like before it was all handwritten. It was they sold a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of copies of that 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 Bible, and you come from that history, knowing a lot of that history and how. They wanted to know that now here is uh, not only the the scripture references, but the genealogy and how important that was for um, for and people of all uh, nations and um, uh, countries and you know where they came from. So, yeah, and another another reward, Debbie, from this. Um, I've always been in, interested in history. I didn't major in that in in college or grad school or anything, but. Uh, I have learned so much history in doing this. Uh, to get into the, to, do, to write the European chapters and do that research, I had to do, do a lot of research on the history of the Mennonites or the Anabaptists and just just European history and the wars and all that. And then a lot of American, uh, early American history. Uh, every Everywhere I've traced my family, I, I have to develop historical context for that. And so now I just feel a lot richer uh, in terms of my knowledge of American history as well as European history. And that's kind of a side benefit that I've really enjoyed and appreciated. And it's really helped me to understand our country and what people even in, in uh, my ancestors went through wow. in Europe and all that. So that's been a real blessing. Wow. That's, um, that's real exciting. I just, uh, I've gotten more and more interested, you know, again, in, as you pile on the years, um, you <laughs> get more interested in history. My main, um, I wasn't as interested going through school. I think it's, I had a crush on the guy in front of me. That was the best part of my, my junior <laughs> history class. <laughs> but but um, anyway, well, Wayne, this has been so fascinating. What an enjoyable time um, that we've had here today. I really appreciate you sharing not only your knowledge, but your passion of uh, leaving that legacy. I think that is just so important, a part of what our halftime years are. And they start sooner than you think. I mean, people are like getting surprised. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I would like to do something else. Do I start or like, I'm afraid or like, you know, I can't get going. So it is just a wonderful thing. And if your website, danielhaston.com, I think that's the uh, website. I'll make sure people know if they can check that out. It's, it's really um, the information on there um, is wonderful. Um, and even putting up that DNA test, that was fascinating, you know, to look at that. It's like, wow, there's an actual, I'm so visual. There's a drawing on here. <laughs> it's really yeah. very fascinating to me. So, um, well, any other last words here before I, I let us sign off here? So. No, I, I'd be glad to help anybody. Uh, if somebody wants to email me and ask some follow-up questions, I'd be fine. Mm. Uh, I think you have my my uh, email address. It's waynh37 at aol.com. It's waynh37 at aol.com. But I'd be glad to help. Uh, a lot of people have asked me lots of questions uh, through email, and, and I enjoy uh, helping any way I can. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yes. And that's, uh, there's a direct link on that website as well. So that was nice, as you said. So, well, thanks again for being here today. It was just um, such a pleasure and appreciate so much for uh, you taking your time and us being able to coordinate this today. It was great. So um, appreciate that. And um, I'll, uh, we'll, yeah, I think every, I, this is fascinating. So so well, thank you, Debbie. I'm, I'm honored that you would ask me, so I'm, I'm glad to help. What a wonderful interview that was. Very enlightening for me and hopefully for you as well. Uh, so this is Deborah Johnson, goalsforyourlife.com, womenathalftime.com. Make sure you join us next week where we're talking about how a malware virus is similar to a physical virus and five ways to protect yourself. This is such a relevant topic, uh, especially with, uh, as I record this, what's been going on in our world today. So you won't want to miss that. And until next week, Deborah Johnson for Women at Halftime. Thank you for joining us on Women at Halftime. 
Visit goalsforyourlife.com or womenathalftime.com for many more resources, downloads, and programs, or to get in touch with me. I'd love it if you leave me a review and tell your friends. So until next time, this is Deborah Johnson signing off.